Okay. Uh, it's a good time because, uh, you know, we just came out of um, some hard energy that was actually preparing us for the new era and um, meditation and prayer is not like it wasn't important before, but in the last week or two where I had not been doing the study groups, say like Bible study and all of that, those things have been um, kind of like on my mind, but I'm still praying to say, how do I do it all, right? And then the next thing is, is um, prayer. Because um, going forward with your projects and uh, new businesses that are being birthed, uh, there's other people that you know that might need help with that. And even people that's gonna need help with um, the, the challenges of not being able to shift over into the new paradigm that we're in. Some of us are there and um, we get kind of like confused because we're in between, you know? Um, you think of yourself like Jesus on the cross and one thief is at the side and then another is at the other and you see how yourself is in the middle, right? Or your sun and your moon. And the moon is about darkness and the sun is about light. But in between, something happened that um, causes us to feel like we're not in the right place. So I wanted to pray and then just give some information about some of the things that I've been seeing and hearing. And I don't mind if you guys kind of like come in and um, add to it in alignment with the future because um, the future is at hand and that's why we're here to add our part of the future. And a lot of people feel insignificant concerning that. Um, it's many of light workers that have um, fallen away from um, the believing, but I believe that uh, many of them were like me preparing outside of the season. We were preparing for this season, not realizing that, you know, which is why I teach across the board with um, theology, uh, psychology, and astrology. Um, so I did put a link here in um, the chat, and there's some information for those that feel that they are on a higher frequency. And that's not to say that you don't experience low energy. A protection a prayer um, is, is in the um, chat box. Uh, low energy is the paradigm that we're coming out of. So we have been acquainted with low energy. We have been it. We had to um, fight to come out of it. Uh, one of the things about energy is, is that when you don't have awareness of it, you still could have that low energy in you and you're combating with it right now. And what that means is, is that it could be blocked up somewhere where pain is, where emotional uh, pain is, and um, spiritual pain, like spiritual pain for people that don't understand that the master that you serve was not about religion. And that is Jesus or Buddha or um, Kuan Yin. And I'm speaking to masses at this time. Um, Krishna, Muhammad, um, they, this was not a religious thing. Um, they were first in a religious mindset. And I'm not saying them, I'm saying that the religion was. But then it transferred over into a spiritual concept. And the spiritual concept is what we want to birth. Um, we want to make sure that we bring an understanding that the word was made flesh. Because if it doesn't, then we'll have all kinds of issues going on. So I'm going to pray and then we'll go into more. Um, discussion about what I'm saying. So Father, Mother, we just thank you 
for the heavens and earth. And we thank you for all that have come on this uh, discussion today. We thank you for healing uh, in areas where there has been hurt and pain. We thank you for healing where there's been disappointment, rejection, and abandonment. And we asked you even by the blood of Jesus that you begin to assist your people with the release of old things, releasing the old things so that truly the new can come in. We thank you that there is no weapon formed uh, against any of us that can prosper. Thank you because we look to the hills from which cometh our help. We know that our help is already at hand and that all things are working in divine order. Forgive us this day our debts. Forgive us when we have hurt others. Forgive us when we operate in carnality. We thank you for angels of protection coming in. Thank you for Michael's, um, his sword and the blue flame that comes out, even just surrounding us right now. We just call in Archangel Michael and his protection. We also call in Raphael and the green emerald light that he gives us for healing and the caduceus. We thank you for the healing of mind, bodies, and souls right now, and even the will to release the old. But we know that our will can fight against yours, father, mother. We know this, but we release our will so that your will can come forth. We thank you that we're going to higher depths and higher widths. We even thank you for releasing old emo emotional attachments right now. Emotional attachments that are not serving us spiritually, mentally, or physically. Thank you that we understand the correction that you're bringing into the earth and that which is upon us. We begin to work um, and put our hands to the wheel uh, to bring forth the manifestations that you've given us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us. We thank you even for our past lessons bringing reconciliation and healing for each and every one of us. Thank you for the wisdom to understand the lessons. And we count it not robbery to know that we are equal with you because you said it in your word. And so here now, we thank you that you turn back every weapon of warfare and even that you give us an understanding of warfare. We thank you that the old self has no power over us and the new self is coming in to action. So we call in our spirit guides and our um, higher soul right now in Jesus name. And we thank you for stirring up the gift. We know the glory is here and we thank you for the women rising up to take their position and stand with confidence and courage concerning the things that they've said. And we just bind up embarrassment, shame. Embarrassment and shame, we bind it. And we just ask for your spirit to release those that have been locked up in embarrassment and shame. Mental imprisonment, we thank you that you break your people out of it. We thank you that lessons have been learned and earned. And so with that, we say, God, we thank you for taking us into the new. Thank you that we have a new to look forward to. Thank you that we take our eyes off of the past so that our hearts and soul can become one and move into the future. Thank you for the present moment of being able to come together and collaborate in prayer and bring our energy together. Thank you for the lifting of your children's energy right now, lifting them up spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally, psychologically. Thank you that they can see a brighter day. I thank you again for giving us an understanding of detachments, detachment from situations, things, and people, detachment from things that we thought and how you should have done it, knowing that you're going to do it. Do it in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for a heightened awareness for your people. Thank you that egos are surrendered in the name of Jesus. Thank you for balance. 
in our lives, balance and peace. Peace. We thank you for the blue light that brings peace into our mind, bodies, and spirits. Yes. Thank you for trusting you again. Thank you that the correction is coming, is needed. And as we see the correction and the chaos that's going on, we know that in the beginning, there was nothing but darkness. And therefore the darkness called forth the light. And so we call forth the light in the midst of it all in each and every one of us. We call forth the light and the healing and we break the power of lack mentality. In our needs, we know that you provide. We break the power of lack mentality that's been attached to our lives and the social construct that gave it to us. We thank you right now, breaking the power of lack mentality that we have all things as we sit and bask in you. We thank you for creative power, creative strategies, creative energy, creative mindsets. We thank you right now that creativity is moving in our minds, bodies, and spirit, in our households, in our families. We thank you for healing. Thank you for binding the spirit of strife within us, not in others, but within us. We take responsibility for those things that we had blamed others for. We thank you that we are higher lifted. Therefore, we have higher thoughts and higher thinking. Thank you for settlement. Thank you for your power and the prayers, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Thank you for your healing, healing, healing. And as we speak and pray and declare a word that we understand that the word is going forward and it is doing the work that it is spoken to do, that word is becoming one with us. We are healed. We are loved. We are powerful. We are joyful. We are excited. We are filled with heavenly, heavenly blessings. Thank you for the lifting of our heads, even in this time. Thank you for the smiles that you're putting on your people's faces, but you're putting the smile in the heart. Thank you for healings, healings, right now, total healing and acceptance, acceptance of who we are, the greatness that we are, and even the resurrection of the fire of God and the goddess within us. Thank you even for Sandoval, the archangel spirit reminding us of this. And we say it is done and it is done, amen and amen. All right, so I want to go to um, Psalms 55. I'm going to put this link also in um, the chat. Uh, it will help you with emotions and um, also. Okay.
Just give me a minute. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Because my um computer is, I can't put the link in yet, but I can go ahead and read um, what I have. So after um I was in meditation, um I, I'm not at Psalms 55 yet because my computer is trying to settle itself. Um, I know we're in the retrograde energy, but um, I, I was looking at some things that came up. And the number one thing that I don't do is um, really get involved in what's happening with the collective because I like to hear from spirit myself, but I also don't need to put myself in that energy. Um, that's me. And um, it's kind of like better if we put our minds in that place because we're not actually in the energy that's happening out there. We're actually um, in the energy that is upgrading. Um, so that means that if we are getting caught up in what's going on in the world, then we won't be an assistance to the world, right? So some of the things to look at and really to practice, um, because I know that people are kind of like dealing with um, anger in some levels is some old stuff coming up. Um, depression. Um, there's mental illness that's kind of like coming up with for people, and that's not just here, but all over the world. And um, the things that have happened have kind of like kicked up the notch with uh, mental illness because anxiety is there, and people don't see a way out of what's happening. They've never experienced it in most cases in this time. And so we want to be able to be in a place where we can help give answers, not um, out of our flesh, but out of our spirit. And that's what um, the new era is about. It's about being able to assist one another. Uh, we lived in a time where it was all about self. and we're moving in a time where it's not about self. Uh, we are our brother's keeper. And many people have said that in the past. I don't think that everybody, um, I wanna say this right. I don't think that everyone just said it. I think that there were many people that actually were working as to be their brother's keeper, but it's becoming more pronounced. and. Am I brothers? Am I my brother's keeper? Was not. It's not a new thing. It it was something that many of our families knew before the fifties came in. Um, however, we are our brother's keeper, but our brothers cannot depend on us. Our brothers have to depend on the spirit realm as we do and so that's a message to go over because when when we were being taught that you know our souls have to be saved we didn't understand what saved and salvation was and the reason why um you can teach about astrology or psychology is because the spiritual part of you can be commanded into freedom that means that if you're angry with some of the connections of understanding and wisdom you can get free and and that's a power in prayer a lot of people had been um praying and they seen nothing happen and they stopped praying or um, they have a feeling of hopelessness but there is hope and that hope is in you 
this time that we're in is calling us to come together community wise, but also to be of responsibility for our own spiritual walks, our own spirituality, to understand that we don't need per se uh, a place to go to to pray and to worship. So the, the corrections that are going on in the earth are first correcting in the people. The people feel like they're losing their minds, but if they release themselves from who they used to be and go with the flow of what is happening, they will get in the current of the move. There is and has been a, um, a force of a great awakening. Um, and I spoke about that in some, some small videos that I made that are on YouTube, um, Perseus and the owl, you know, um, having seen them in a vision, um, you put a name on it and he brought in the great awakening concerning the mythological gods um, and a demigod, which is important to us because he was a man with God in him, which is what Jesus is trying to explain to people. Um, once you get that understanding, you'll be able to go forward and let go of the detachments, the disappointments, uh, the heartaches and pains. You and I are human, but our spirit handles the humanity. Our spirit handles the human part of us because they become one. In the Great Awakening, you also experience sickness in a form of not being sick, but the sickness uh, of releasing old energy, toxicity. So there has been a time where in the last two months, many of us have had symptoms of the flu and we've had colds, seeming like colds, then they'll clear up and we feel better the next day. Spontaneously, we begin to have headaches and we just feel something that is just not right. The thing about this is there's a correction in the body before there can be a correction in the earth. The void and the chaos that's going on that is in the earth is a pronouncement of a new beginning. But the new beginning cannot be seen until there's uh, many people that can see it. Therefore, many of us have to see the new beginning. How do you see that? you create that visual of what you would have the world to look like rather than what you see happening in the physical world right now. Because all of that has to do with your power of creativity and creation as a god or goddess. And this is what the demigods did. You have to go deep. You can't just look at things and think that in this time, you're going to be okay. What you already learned is done. Now what you're doing is taking what you learn into you and the world. And, you know, you're allowing it to be pronounced and go forward. That's why it's important for people not to... speak as though it is sound and brass in them. Sound and brass is not going to do anything for any of us. A unity, collectivity, the power of being together and encouraging you know, each other is what's going to help. So one of the, the, the most powerful things that you could correct at this time is the power that you've given to lack. Take your power back from lack. And that means if it was someone that lost a house, they lost money, they lost children some way or another, if they lost um, in relationships, we understand that there's no lack, there is correction there. All right? There's no lack, it's correction. And I know that a lot of people are caught up in how. 
I just gave you why. How does not matter how you're going to get there. It doesn't matter if you actually believe in the spirit. You can see yourself connected with how you overcome. You can also read and believe how you overcome. That's the power, but you have to let go of the lack because any lacks that have come up and said, um, you don't have this and you don't have that. How are you going to make it? You know, there could be people that are listening and they were in the move of re releasing jobs. They don't know they released the job because there's something greater waiting for them. Six months later, they might still be in that same energy saying what they lost. They lost it because there's something more to obtain, but the mind and the heart has to agree on, I can obtain something new and better. So that means that as the world is going through the transformation, we pull back from looking at the world and looking at what happened a year ago and uh, six months ago and say, there's a correction to the way that I think. But if I can correct the way that I think, even the fact that I feel like I'm lacking in something, then I'll be able to replace it with that something and become grateful that I have it already. I don't even want the same things that I had because if it was taken away or if I released it, because that's how powerful we are, then that means that there's something greater for us to, you know, to receive. And, th and that's the truth because there's nothing that is taken from you that you cannot go in and begin to recreate. The thing is, is that we have to remind each other. You know, if we lost family members and, you know, um, myself and Kamoy, you know, our fathers have passed in the last week. Um, yeah, it's been a week apart. And the thing about this is, is that we can agree that we know that they're going on to a better place and celebrate their lives. This is the truth. And so uh, you release it and them, and then take into account the, um, the greatness of their lives. And so um, moving on, I'm gonna go in. No, I'm gonna read what she says. So Quan Yin is um, a goddess. Um, I can't remember the time that she lived in, but you could look it up yourself because I, I listened to the meditation music of hers. So she says, I am open and receptive. I take the time to just be. I listen intently with my heart. I have a balanced mental perspective. Mercy and compassion are abundant within me. I am grateful for all the blessings in my life. Are you connected with the oneness of your heart and mind? Are you seeking a way to balance your emotions and release tears brought on by mood swings? Invite the energy of divine feminine to restore your equilibrium. Feel the energy of mercy, compassion, and kindness within you and from those around you. Sometimes we, we, we look for the worst in people. We don't even let go of the worst, right? And that's something to think about because truth that sets you free and even with us discussing Uranus, the freedom cannot come until we actually release um, the lies that we've thought. Because, you know, as I read this, Feel the energy of mercy and compassion and kindness within you and from those around you. Invite the energy of divine feminine to restore your equilibrium. One of the things about divine feminine is, is that she was like Mary in the Bible and the women that are not talked about in the Bible, because there's some that are talked about, but it's not a whole lot of history for us to really know how to be. We have to take um, more of the masculine information. So, however, the feminine energy in women needed correction. And the wonderful thing about this is when we go on and we look at it, we may have experienced male energy 
over the centuries and we felt like it was something wrong with it, but the correction had to take time because there's something about women where they, they give all and they think a certain way and they won't change it. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't give you power, but the part that causes lack is when it does not come in the way that we want. Men handle that differently. Women also have problems with each other, which this needs to be corrected because when you are maturing and growing in spiritual enlightenment, you don't have a problem with people. I can say that I've had those problems, but you know, once you start looking at divine love and unconditional love, it's not that you don't correct the person, but you're, you're gonna give them a pass. You're gonna move beyond that, I don't like you and you don't like me. That, that spirit of gossiping, creating your own reality about people rather than seeing the reality of who they are. Now, some of the realities of women are as it is and they need correction, but correction comes at a certain time. If you look at things like I'm seeing them and you don't have to see them like me, but if you go back over time, you could see where women were being set up for a time such as this for greatness. You can see it because they went through sliding. They've been slided, slided on all levels from uh, the head of running uh, this country to um, being a mother of many children living in poverty and not being supported by fathers. Now we can change it over and look at the fathers, but I wanna look at the divine feminine because she has to take accountability right now for what she did not accept about herself. You can look at pride, envy and striving, confusion, worry and doubt. But a lot of the, these issues with the woman and even with women and women has to be corrected. So when we go out and we're looking at uh, what we want out of life is not that we cannot have it. It's because of our concept of thinking. All right. So invite the energy of the divine feminine to restore your equilibrium. Equilibrium is balance within the body, inside your mind, body, and spirit. Nothing is happening outside of you. Even when Jesus went and he was baptized, that was just a symbol outside of pictures that was seen. Baptism happened within. The baptism happened within. Even the dark night of the soul happens within which is what he was, he was working towards when he was baptized. The world that we actually create is from within. So everything that we feel about someone else is what we feel about ourselves, bottom line. Okay, so I'm gonna read Isaiah, not Isaiah, he is on my mind, but um, Psalms 55. And, and I'm going to go to, uh, it's going to be further in the chapter. Uh, you guys should read it because um, you'll find some things that you definitely will be able to think about. Okay, so I'm going to go from 18, 55 and 18. And it says, he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Selah. 
because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved, the righteous, the right in you. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Now, the thing about this is, is that when you go up and you're reading this here, you'll find that he says that it was my own friend or acquaintance, meaning it was someone close because no one can help you to fall and come into an emotional demise, but someone that is close and knows you. They, they have access to your heart. So, but thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out their days, but I will trust in them. Now, when you look at these words, many people look outside of themselves. And they direct this energy of prayer towards other people outside of themselves. We need to really direct this here energy of understanding the enemy in us is the first to deal with. It's the energy of the enemy within us. And until we do that, we won't be able to release emotions that are connected to people that hurt us because we brought those people into our lives by the way that we behaved or responded. That's accountability. So correction, this is where correction is. Uh, your ungratefulness, when you said you were uh, grateful, you and I, forming a gratitude, um, uh, you know, writing daily or something that will get you in that mindset when you are feeling like, woe is me, will bring your mind into correction. But being grateful for everything that you have, regardless if you see it or not, is the other part of correction that we have to come into because we have to elevate our, our energy. You can't receive without being in a higher vibration. If you hate someone, and um, you're jealous, it brings you down. And so that energy is doing what it was supposed to do. If you are depressed, the energy is doing what it's supposed to do, take you down. That's you and me. And so we have the choice. It's either our will or God's. And God's will for us is to grow and to be lifted. And of course, people will question and say, well, you know, why did I have to go through this? Because you chose it. There's a part of spirituality. And before we came here, we did not remember. We chose the walk. If we could just stand on those understandings and even people that don't know it, they learn something different, then we would get more uh, answers and clarity. And for us that don't know anything but what we know, why won't I step out of comfort zone and be led by my intuition is telling me there's something more to me concerning spirituality. If you know, if you felt like um, your religion is not working for you, that's because it's religion. It's a legion. Legion spirit. It's traditional. God is not traditional. That's why we have so many surprises happening here. Tradition is made out of a man concept. You may have something that's going great for about two or three months, and then it's a shift that's happened. Nothing is consistent anymore. 
And so that's something to think about. How can you get your footing when nothing is consistent? You have to build your world within. Because what's not consistent is outside of us. Some people have had to move two times in a year or two years, you know, two, it's been more moving consistently and they feel like God is not with them, but they don't know that everywhere that they go, God may be giving them rest or the ability to meet more people for what he wants them to do. Your mind has to think beyond what you're going through. You're stronger than you think. You really are. Because that's what the God in you is about, the goddess. So the corrections, they happen in our mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that a repetitive scripture or is it a scripture that is unlimited in thinking? I can do all things. It's not in our might and in, in our power, but it is in the might of that God within us, the goddess within us. And so if you take that on today, you will begin to, to see that I can do all things through Christ. I can even look over the flaws of others because I have them. I am not perfect. Only Satan, the pride in man is Satan. The anger in man, the lies in man, manipulation in man. Only that part can say that he is great without flaws. This is even uh, narcissistic uh, thoughts. And I'm not saying disorder, and I'm not even giving away to the cliche, but narcissist behavior is uh, what satanic behavior is like. You're working out of your own power. You go to work every day, and you think that it's not gonna change from a building to technology. That's you. That is not the universe. Because the universe is speaking in harmony with itself and giving us what we need to move forward financially, mentally, spiritually, you know, concerning housing, all of the needs that we have materially, uh, physically, and spiritually. Someone, you know, going through sickness and pain in their, their body, more meditation, less eating, learning to eat the foods that are adapted to your body. Sometimes you need to stop eating meat and you don't want to. And so you have pain in your body. You may have a reaction to uh, milk and not receive it and keep eating or drinking milk, dairy products, cheese. And that's for those that are looking for change. Sometimes your mind won't change because the hunger in you won't change. The hunger uh, goes with the mindset, the mind is telling uh, the heart or the hunger, I need this. And sometimes you got to get in yourself and say, no, the warring stops. I don't need that. It's, it's us making a decision, okay? So collective prayer, corrections. When something leaves, your life, my life, whatever it is, if it's a pair of shoes, you can guarantee that they're coming back. Don't be afraid to give. You know, when I say shoes, you know, I just seen somebody giving their shoes away because they felt something. And then they're going to say, oh, now I don't have no shoes. You do because you set yourself up for them to come. New ones. Lack mentality will not bring increase. Every time that something leaves, your opportunity to receive is there. You just keep on celebrating. Thank you, thank you. It's in the praise and the gratefulness. Thank you, the gratitude. Thank you, thank you. Even when the thoughts are coming and um, they seem more powerful, um, you gotta just keep saying thank you because it's your will versus your spiritual will. Okay, any questions? No questions for me, Ms. Kim. Anybody wanna add anything? 
to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. All right. Well, uh, no questions. Okay, we're going to end this today. Thank you guys for coming on. And be blessed and keep your mind on the straight and narrow. All right. Thank you, Miss Kim. Everybody enjoy your weekend. You too.